Well, hello kitties. Here we are again with another no S. Uh, it's not a tutorial actually. It's just kind of an explanation of uh, where I went after kayak number one um, because it was a prototype. My intention all along was to do uh, a much nicer one, but I had to do one to figure out all the mistakes that uh, you inevitably do when you do something for the first time. So here's kind of the evolution uh, of uh, kayak number two. Uh, this was the prototype, kayak number one. Some of you have looked at my other video, know well, what this is, Team Gas, Geezer's Athletic Society. Um, after I made this first prototype, I found I needed to make some changes. I took it down uh, and paddled it around and found out that the uh, combing was way too wide. I kept banging my fingers all over it, and it needed some kind of back support. Um, so I took the combing off and turned it around and I added a, an adjustable seat. It definitely paddled easier but uh, still looked like uh, plastic wrapped around a bunch of sticks. So I decided to build another one um, uh, with a finished frame because I was going to cover it in clear vinyl um, because my interest really in this is in the woodworking, the art of the woodworking and only secondarily to have some practical use. I've made lots of things over the years that were just strictly for the artistic effort of it and this was um, in my head uh, for this project too but uh, the practical use is I get to do some upper body exercise as I explained in the uh, previous video. So here it is number two. I learned a lot from doing number one uh, quite a bit uh, of what you don't want to do. I guess that is the learning process huh? You don't learn anything from doing something successfully the first time but you definitely do from doing it not so successfully and uh, I definitely did with this one. Here's another photo of it. I really like this uh, even if I say so myself. Uh, it, it's so striking to have this clear. So many people asking so many questions about this when we had it down at the uh, Dana Point Marina. And here we are at the Dana Point Marina on its uh, maiden voyage uh, of the clear one over here. Uh, you can see the prototype. I had still had had not messed with that one yet. Uh, it's a, was amazing how many questions I got from this thing. I finally, the second time we took it down, I had made up little cards so I wouldn't have to answer the same question 1,400,000 times. Uh, the question, did you make this? Yes, I did. Um, what's it covered in? Um, Plexiglass, no, 20 mil vinyl. Uh, how much does it weigh? Uh, how much did it cost? How long did it take? You know, usual questions. Um, really amazing how uh, interesting this was to most people as it is to me. And uh, by having both of them down there, I found that the, uh, the second one, the clear coat one, uh, handled significantly better than the first one. So I did a little more investigation, tried to figure out why, why that was. Uh, because they're two different, slightly different designs. They're not the both, both off the same design <clears throat> because I had to make a lot of changes based on what I learned from the first one. Uh, that first one had way too much rocker, I guess that's what they call it. I'm not a boat guy, but I think that's what they mean when it says that the um, the front and the back of the thing are a little higher than the center. So what this thing was doing was kind of pivoting off the center when you'd paddle. So I took the skin off and added an extension of the keel and a new combing, which is the same dimensions as the uh, second one. Then I painted the frame because I thought I was going to skin it also in clear vinyl, but I changed my mind. Co uh, it cost 60 bucks to order that uh, vinyl skin, and I determined I'd rather save that for boat number three. So I found an old piece of canvas, which was really just a drop cloth for uh, painting your house. And uh, I skinned it with uh, that canvas, really kind of cheapy thin canvas, and then I used up all the paint I could find in my garage. You know, you got lots of cans of you know, half-used paint. Well, I just took all of it I could find and painted the dickens out of it. It's got about 10 pounds of paint on it now. And then I made a little stencil for it. So there you go, Bob's your uncle, just like a new boat. And here's a photo of it. That's the same one as the prototype, except now it's covered in canvas that's painted and painted and painted. Um, then I uh, revamped the seat, put a new combing on it, um, and it looks a lot different. Alright, so I'm going to show you a little video here now uh, of the things actually working. Let me make sure I can get over here and come back. So hang on while I transfer over to the video. Alright, let's see if this is going to run. Twink. 
that's one of my sons paddling the clear vinyl one. You see it lays pretty flat. And that's me with the paddle trying to hold myself in the wind. It was windy as could be that day. Paddles pretty well. Okay, I got another, another piece of video to show you. Hang on while I stop this one. All right, here's the uh, second time we were down at the uh, marina. Oop, that's not the one I want. Do, 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 do. Try it again. Okay, this is the second time we were down there. I had both my sons down there this time. Um, so, number one son is bringing in the prototype, which has been revamped, so it's now the SS No S. Alright, so, doesn't look too bad for, you know, just crappy canvas with a whole bunch of paint on it. It wasn't quite as windy this day. And you can just make out back here. Here's my other son coming in with the uh, clear one. That's the first time he'd ever been in a, um, a kayak, ever. Uh, he was more than a little bit uh, apprehensive uh, about getting in a boat that uh, you can see the water between your legs. <laughs> but it turned out pretty well. He uh, used actually both, both the kayaks. Did pretty good. They really are pretty stable. They got a very wide uh, beam, 24 inches, uh, which is what I was after. I'm not after some whiz-bang thing. I just want a boat to f paddle around in that kind of looks cool. And definitely this one does. And there you go. Okay, let's go back over to this one. So, a little bit of information about the construction. Uh, you can read this. Put your uh, video on hold. I won't go through the whole thing. Um, but I'm older than dirt. Uh, all my friends uh, that I bike ride with, well, not all of them, but most of them are uh, senior citizens like myself. Um, we're pretty active, but we're still, you know, not as uh, nimble as we used to be. And so when I uh, designed these things off of... Uh, some base plans. Uh, I had to make the uh, cowling much, much bigger because I have no intentions of ever rolling one of these things. I want a boat that will stay upright in calm water. So if it does tip over, I want to be able to fall out like a sit on top. So when I did that, uh, it changes significantly the whole characteristics of the boat. you got to figure out where everything goes. So it's not like I've designed a new boat that's way beyond my... Uh, mathematical capability but I did do massive modifications based on some basic structures and basic plans alright so it's really simple to build one of these boats you only need three forms of lumber really you need the cross members which are typically plywood and some long skinny boards which you can rip from wider boards for the uh, keel the stringers and the gunnels and uh, short wide boards for the bow stern plates and the combing the real challenge to doing this is to have enough tools um, to be able to do it in some reasonable amount of time. I mean, the Eskimos did this with nothing but a hand axe and, uh, you know, some sticks they found washed up on the shore and some seal skin. So, you know, it's not like it's technically difficult to physically build it. It's just it takes a long time if you don't have, uh, you know, the right tools. So the first thing is to rip long skinny boards from wider boards for the keel gunnels and stringers and... Uh, Unfortunately, if you're using a bandsaw like I did and you got a skip tooth blade, it leaves a really crappy surface on these uh, boards when you rip them. So you need one of these little dudes right here that cleans up that crappiness and makes them really nice on all four sides. But it does make a huge gigantic mess and that thing is louder than the dickens. It is so loud and blows that stuff everywhere, but it's an incredibly nice machine. The next thing is, uh, if you're pretty much like the rest of us, you can't find boards long enough. So after you've cut these into the right uh, dimensions in terms of uh, width, uh, they're not long enough. So you're going to probably have to scarf a couple of them together. Now, some of the uh, boat builders, they'll just uh, block these together. They'll take the two, say, the two stringers and then just use another board on the side. I, I didn't like that. I wanted mine to be scarfed because I was looking for a, a woodworking project. Um, all right, that looked halfway decent. 
So to scarf them, you cut them on an angle, typically on a bandsaw, and then uh, in this case, you need this the surface of the scarf very, very smooth. So this helps uh, an oscillating, reciprocating uh, bell sander. Probably don't have one of those, huh? So here they are, all the eight footers ready to be joined. I've scarfed the ends of all these things, so you just join them together, glue them together, and here is one kind of an example. That's where the scarf is glued right here. And then my design required that the, all of these uh, stringers, gunnels, and so on are rounded over because when I built the cross members, I actually drilled the hole first so that I had a round surface over here instead of trying to cut a nice square hole like is often shown. Uh, I wanted mine round, so uh, I had to round all of these boards right here. And to that, uh, you need yet another tool right here. Right? I've got a bunch of routers, but uh, this one's the smallest and easiest for me to use. And then I had to make a jig to hold these, and I could do two at a time. You know, go down one side and then come back the other side, and then turn them over and go down one side and go back the other side. Pretty simple process if you used a router before. And here it is. This is a nice rounded over, clean scarf. Came out pretty nice. Then I uh, cut the uh, cross members by using, uh, once again, my bandsaw. <clears throat> you change it to a different blade so it's got a much smoother cut. You can do that on the outside, but the inside presents a problem. You can't do that with a man saw. You have to either use a uh, what off, people often call a jigsaw, which is really a saber saw, or a true jigsaw, because this blade comes off. So you can drill a hole in a big blank like this and then thread the blade down through the hole and then that lets you let you cut the inside uh, of something like one of these cross members all right but typically most people just would have a saber saw the only problem with a saber saw is uh, you have to get a really really fine blade or it tears out the uh, plywood so here I am positioning the cross members on the keel location right here <clears throat> because I had ma massively changed where these things normally would go on most designs because I had uh, made the cockpit so much bigger uh, that I had to figure out how, where and how to put these th things. Then I, uh, after I got all that figured out, uh, I set up the bow plate right here, <clears throat> which is also kind of a tricky thing because you have to kind of bring these uh, pieces into it which is a very um, uh, high um, angle uh, cut on these pieces coming in and to make them um, s uh, go up against the bow plate and the stern plates very uh, smoothly I just take a, an old sanding belt and kind of pull this up with your thumb and then yank that sanding belt through just over and over and over again and what it'll do is it'll match this angle right here so it'll lay perfectly flat on the um, on the plates. It's really it took me a little while to figure that out. I don't know why, because I've been doing woodworking forever. Here I am setting up the uh, stern plate. Same idea. Gunnels come in. You can sand them so that they f uh, flatten down onto the uh, stern plate just right. So here's the final frame assembly where I'm uh, putting everything together, or had everything put together at this point. Uh, including the uh, flooring and the uh, kick plates down here for uh, so your feet will go on them. I I didn't try to do an adjustable foot thing here. I just left enough space between the uh, floorboards here that you can actually put your heel in any one of these slots. It's a much simpler system. Then we uh, laid up the 20 mil vinyl on this thing. <clears throat> uh, you can stretch this if it's warm you got to make sure you do this on a really warm day and leave the stuff sit out in the sun. Uh, it takes two of us to do this, um, so you pull it down. you got to do the uh, hull uh, first. You can't do this in one piece. That stuff is not stretchy enough. So it takes two of us. We let this get out here really hot, and then you pull this down by just kind of laying over it with your hand on one hand on one side and the other one on the other side, and you pull it down tight. And then you have a second person actually staple it along the gunnels, making sure you use um, stainless steel staples. Um, so after we got it all done, stapled the uh, base and then stapled the top, and then I, I ran a, 
a piece over the top here you see later on one of the photos um, so we strapped it on the top of my truck and we we're ready for the first float test I made this uh, simple little cross brace back here for my truck um, and uh, actually I moved this one way over here and I moved this one way over here so that hopefully when I get my third boat done I'll be able to put three boats on this thing all at the same time so after the uh, test and a few fixes that you know I put this uh, cap piece on here and here and I ran this uh, side piece down to uh, cover over all the staples about a, a gazillion staples uh, we're done and there we are we're done <laughs>